Good day to you. My name is Kostan Komo and welcome. This is 263 Chat and uh, today we are so much privileged to have uh, Honorable Minister um, Terence Mukupe, the Deputy Finance Minister um, of our country and we have him today to have to give us some of the uh, clarifications and explanations regarding the current affairs uh, in our country, specifically with uh, the behavior of our economy, the performance of our economy, you know, the narrative of the new uh, Zimbabwe is open for business, the new dispensation, all sorts of things that some people might not, might not know what it means exactly to be the new dispensation, what it means uh, when we are saying Zimbabwe is open for business. So, Honorable, thank you uh, one, one more time. Uh, would you like to tell our viewers, Zimbabweans in particular, um, the overview of your time in office since November last year and up to two, up to April today, your, your 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 overview. What have been happening in your office? What have been meeting? The, your experiences, the hurdles, the challenges, the successes, and also give us a, a brief projection of what we, uh, where we are going regarding your uh, the, the brief experience that you have been in government so far. No, I must say it's um, it's been one hell of a ride. Um, you know, being someone who came from a corporate sector and coming from where everything functions and works well, I must say coming into government and particularly the Minister of Finance uh, was quite shocking for me. Um, you know, when you come from a platform where you're used to having everything working and uh, where decisions are made uh, quite quickly and swiftly, and then all of a sudden you have situations where uh, sometimes decisions take as much as uh, a month for something that in the corporate sector, you know, you'd get it done um, in a couple of days. I must say that, you know, it's been a rude awakening. And, um, you know, with the Ministry of Finance, clearly, I think when we came on board, um, the ministry was kind of like in crisis mode. I think it was clear with what was happening with Zimra where you know the scooter systems were down um and where you you could also see what was happening with the with the with the forex situation the parallel market rates um you know and you're also having the price hikes you know um goods you know you're having um you know goods were on an upward trend but like i'm happy that like from the time that i came on board um firstly we managed to reverse um, the price increases of a number of commodities and thankfully to the vision of the president and also the work that General Chuenga, Chuenga did especially around the bringing down the prices of commodities and I think also in terms of Zimra it's, it's a good thing that like you know we are things are slowly beginning to take shape yes there's a new CEO in and I'm sure more needs to be done, especially around issues of corporate governance, and even um, seeing that the term of the current board is also coming to, a, to coming to an end. It will be a welcome. It will be a welcome end. Also, I, I, I would want to believe that you would want to see new faces and fresh faces coming on board. Um, the other thing that uh, that has also been happening is that, you know, a day hardly ever passes uh, where I don't get someone coming into my office trying to offer money to us as a country, trying to invest something into the country. And I'm actually noticing that the problem that we now have in Zimbabwe is not a problem of FDI wanting to come into the country, but it's a problem of us having the right kind of projects with the right kind of visibilities that can, that can actually end up having a situation where those deals end up closing. Uh, because what we need are jobs. People are tired of uh, have seeing photo shoots of all these investors coming into the country, but we need tangible deals to close. And I'm also happy that my president has been taking decisive action. You know, when you look at things like the Blair Beach Road, we had so many false starts uh, during the Mugabe period. But you know, when the president came, he gave he gave uh, the guys who had the tender a hard had a deadline to say by such and such a date the road must be constructed and since it didn't happen he cancelled the tender and is retendering it you see that's a sort of decisive action that i'm hoping that like the rest of government 
uh, is going to be operating from because you've got a situation where people in government are afraid to make decisions and this is coming from the old dispensation i think power was too concentrated in the head of state in a few hands but like people have to learn that like you being in government and being entrusted with a job you have to make decisions and decisive decisions that can turn the country around you, you brought in a very interesting subject the cancellation of the tender of the Austrian firm to construct the, I mean, to dualize the uh, Harare uh, Bait Bridge uh, Road. But uh, let's look at the government. Isn't it its duty to start by assessing and evaluating the, the firm or the company which it intends to award the tender before actually giving it a green light to continue embarking on the project? You're, you're, you're very correct. That's, that's what should happen. You know, when someone comes and, and, and says that they can do the job, I mean, if you're looking at such a project, which is a billion dollar pro project, it, it should be clear that in terms of your due diligence, you should be, have done due diligence to see that this entity, does it have the money? And I think with those companies that had tried to tender, uh, some of them were blacklisted. And then you wonder, how did you end up having a situation where you have a blacklisted company uh, being given the, the, the tender to build such a, such a, a, such a massive uh, project? So, um, you know, that's what I'm happy about. That like with our dispensation, we will not tolerate to cancel tenders where people are not able to perform. Um, you know, the, the, sometimes when you have people ignoring telltale signs and visible signs, they potentially could have been corrupt dealings. And that's why you end up people not carrying out the necessary uh, due diligence. And that's why we were saying that like, if people are incompetent and cannot be able to carry out such necessary due diligence, they've got no job having, they've got no business having some jobs that they have. Let's look at the period when uh, this firm was awarded the tender. That was May 2016 mm -hmm. and up to day, which is now close to two years. Mm -hmm. um, would you like to tell us something uh, regarding the government itself on what was it doing? Uh, I mean, now we are talking about Mugabe being in power, mm. and you know, for these past two years, nothing was going on on the ground. No, that's, uh, you see, that's exactly what I'm saying. I mean, if if someone has come and they've said that they've got uh, they've got the money to be able to carry out such a project, and they go for two years without carrying out the project, then questions have to be asked. That like. Why are we keeping the contract open? And why weren't we making decisions? Unless if somebody was being paid to make sure that they keep that contract open. And all I can say is that I don't want to dwell in the past. All I'm happy is that my president has taken decisive action and canceled that contract. And I hope this is a warning sign to, to all these other people that, are, that had become tenderpreneurs and that are just holding on to all these tenders and are not performing. I know there are even some people who are given like tenders of some of these power stations and they've not done anything. So I think this is a total sign that the president is not going to be afraid to make, uh, to make the right kind of decisions and to make the call to cancel some of those tenders. Now the cancellation has been done. Mm. When, when do Zimbabweans should expect uh, this project to resume probably the, being given to a new tender the, the minister your your project the, pre the president has already said that the project should be retendered so it, this should be a quick process because the parameters of the tender are known and i think it's a matter of now improving on those parameters because the parameters that were there resulted in us not being able to achieve whatever it is that we wanted to achieve so we need to improve those parameters and make sure that we take the project back to the market and allow those that have got the capital and have got the capacity to be able to carry out these projects to actually carry it out. Probably this should be my last question to you now. We, we are looking at the latest developments, the signing of deals, uh, the president is in and out of the country, engaging every, every, every world, and the Zimbabweans, they seem to be so divided. The reactions, there are mixed reactions, you know. Some are actually equating these deals to Mugabe's deals, you know, that were signed since 2013, 2014. Well, what kind of difference would you like to articulate and give to, the, to our viewers and Zimbabweans in particular that President Mnangagwa's Chinese deals are different from President um, Mugabe and former uh, Mr. Mugabe's deals uh, that were signed with the Chinese? What's the difference and when is Zimbabwe should actually expect the returns of these deals that are being signed now? Okay, how many days has it been since the deal has been signed? Well... It's less than two days. Yes, So to start judging someone after two days, don't you think you're being unfair? 
of course, I, I do understand where you are coming from, but we are saying these deals, President Mnangagwa is engaging everywhere at the moment. And as I said, there are mixed reactions. Some are actually already equating these deals to, pres to former President Mr. Mugabe. Mr. Mugabe engaged with the Chinese and he signed so many deals. But to be frank enough, you know, let me, let, ground, let me tell you, let me tell you the difference because I think I've, I'm privy to some of the things. The different, the fundamental difference between what President Mugabe and what President Mnangagwa are doing is this: President Mugabe used to sign generic memorandums, which are not deal specific. Whereas, if you notice with President Mnangagwa, everything has been doing has been deal specific. That's a fundamental difference. So when you sign a generic memorandum, you know, you can go find any certificate of attendance that my grandmother who's illiterate when she attends a course will get. About or something, you know, but where you're saying like, okay, if you're signing a deal on Wange, it's specific to Wange. If you're signing a deal about Kariba, it's specific to Kariba. If you're signing a deal that's about the airport, that was specific. You're signing a deal about a parliament building, it's specific. You're signing a deal that's going to do with, uh, with uh, um, you know, the uh, platinum concessions. That's specific. Um, he, he had the deals that had to do with uh, um, the, 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 the chemical, the, the mineral that's used for batteries. That's specific. Lithium. So you find he is signing deals that are specific to specific transactions. Whereas Ram Gabe, we're talking of generic deals. If you ask me to do Ram Gabe deal or sign and the you can't even point at it. Because it was memorandums, cooperation agreements. And then it will be announced that he signed an agreement with the Chinese. Yes, they are agreements. But are they specific deals? They're not. Whereas Ram Nangago had specific deals. Your brief explanation to the new dispensation in Zimbabwe is open for business to our viewers in Zimbabwe in particular? No, I think what I want to make clear is that the I know there's been a cry out there where people are saying that when President Mnangagwa is going out and he's talking about Zimbabwe being open for business, he seems to be only catering for the foreigners that are coming into Zimbabwe. But I would want to assure our local business people, the local Zimbabweans, that like what the president is saying is that like when Zimbabwe is open for business, it's open for business for everybody. What you have to realize is that like, yes, the companies that are outside, they come with the big money, big factories, big entities. We as the local Zimbabweans do not have that, that size of capital. But like the small businesses that we can be able to come up with, which allows us to be able to feed into the procurement budgets of those companies. So it's a win-win situation for everybody. So don't think that when the president is saying open for business and is going out there, he's leaving out the local Zimbabwean business people. No, he is making sure that it becomes a win-win situation for everybody. I should thank you for making time out of your year schedule. Uh, this is uh, Honorable Minister, Deputy Minister of Finance, uh, uh, Honorable Terence Mukuru. We want to thank you once more and have a pleasant night. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you. For these and other stories, visit our website www.263chat.com. Follow us on Twitter at 263chat and like our Facebook page 263chat.